Hi, my name is Emiliano Sedacasi, and I'm a gallery assistant at the HCC Art Galleries. Today, we're going to mat a photograph. To mat this photograph, Gasparilla Ship by Suzanne Camp Crosby, we're going to need a few tools. First, we have this cutting board or cutting mat. Uh, we have the mat itself. Um, we have a pen and paper to do some calculations. Um, to do the actual cutting, we have a straight edge with a track on it. This straight cutting tool, which will ride along the track. This bevel cutting tool, which will also ride along the track. This is for cutting out the actual window of the mat. We have some gloves for handling the artwork. Uh, and then once everything is cut and we need to secure it to the mat, we have this linen hinge tape. Uh, if you're going to be reframing the piece, we also have a point driver so that everything stays secure within the frame. Before we cut anything for this mat, uh, I always think it's important to have all your measurements planned out ahead of time. Um, so the first thing that we need to know is the size of the frame that this mat is going to go in eventually. Um, I suppose I could try and measure just the inside of these two sides of the frame, but almost every frame comes with a backing piece, and because we know that this backing piece fits exactly within the frame, I can just measure this. Um, so I measured this to 15 and 3 sixteenths um, by 13 and 7 eighths. So then I made that on my sketch there. And then you have to find the measurements of the piece that you're matting. Um, this piece has a border around it already that was printed with it, um, but I want the mat to uh, only expose the picture itself. So I'm going to measure the inside of that. And that's 8 and 7 eighths um, by 8 and 7 eighths. That's a perfect square. So I have that marked as well, but I want the window to come in actually just like a sixteenth of an inch uh, from every edge. Um, that's because I want to give myself a little bit of play to make sure that I can get it within the window without any of this white border showing. Um, but I also don't want to bring it in too much so I don't crop any of this because it is a pretty small picture. Um, so the more I bring it in, the more that picture I lose. So I want it to just be a sixteenth on, on every side. So that means from the overall dimensions that I measured, I'm going to subtract an eighth of an inch because one sixteenth on one side plus one sixteenth on the other side equals an eighth. So eight and seven eighths minus an eighth is eight and three quarters. Um, so I have eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters marked on there. I have my original dimensions of the frame itself. Um, and so now I have to figure out where to start cutting the window. And I want the window for this piece to be directly in the center of the mat. Um, so to find how far in from every side the window is going to be cut, what you want to do is subtract the picture dimensions that you found from the overall dimensions of the mat and then divide that by two for, for every side. So if the width of the uh, overall 
piece of the mat. It's going to be 15 and 3 16 I would subtract 8 and 3 quarters from 15 and 3 16 and then divide that number by 2 and that would tell me how far in left to right to start cutting. And if I want to find that same distance from top to bottom, you would subtract uh, the dimension that we found for the height of the inner backing, 13 and 7 eighths, and subtract 8 and 3 quarters from that as well, since this is a square. Um, and that measurement you get 5 and an eighth, and then that divided by 2, you end up with 2 and 9 sixteenths. So it's not very fun math to do for this particular piece, um, but you do want to be as accurate as possible um, so that you only have to cut that window once. Um, so now that I have everything planned out on my sketch and I know all my measurements, I can actually start measuring and cutting on the actual piece of map board. Um, it's important to uh, similar to woodworking, always measure from like a factory edge is what they call it um, because we know those edges are completely straight. Um, this is a brand new piece so all of the edges right now are you know factory edges. Um, so I am going to measure my width first and if you recall that was 15 and 3 16 so I'm gonna put this ruler right along the bottom edge and make a little mark this so I have the edge of the ruler on the slide side against one dot and against the other dot and that's going to be a straight line so I'll take my straight cutting piece here Get some more leverage so I can really press down hard and make the cut. So now we have a piece. Um, this dimension here is 15 and 3 16 So now I have to find the height dimension. Um, and that was three, it was 13 and 7 eighths in the frame. So I'm going to measure that on either edge here. piece and sure enough fits right in there once you have your piece of mat board cut to the dimensions to fit inside the frame now I'm gonna flip it over so we can make all the marks we need to make and we're gonna actually cut this side up um, when we cut our window. So we went through all the trouble of doing all the math ahead of time so now I can just start measuring from the edges um, and I always try to measure along the straight edges like I mentioned before. So side to side the width dimension we're gonna be going in 
3 and 7 30 seconds from the edges. So now I have marks um, marking from the sides left to right how far in the window is going to be. Uh, and those marks are opposite sides of each other. So eventually I'm going to end up with a grid, but I'm just going to draw lines to show that distance on this dimension. Okay, now I have to find uh, the distance from the top and the bottom for the window. Um, so that we figured out was 2 and 9 sixteenths. So just a, a hair over 2 and a half. Um, so again, I'm going to measure from the edges just to be precise. And now I have the window. This is going to be the window. So that's going to be gone. Before we cut out the window, I always like to bring the piece near it just to make sure, get a little visual on if we've done all our math right before we make anything uh, that's going to be a permanent cut. So if I place this a little bit over those lines. I can see that these lines, if they continued, we would cover up just a little bit of that picture, which is what we're looking for. Same thing if I do this here. Put it close to the edges there. I know if these lines continued pretty much exactly 16th of an inch over on either side. So this is the most important and most consequential part of this activity. Um, before you make the window cuts, which we're going to use our bevel cutting tool for that, you want to make sure that the blade is very sharp. And when you start making that cut, you're going to make multiple passes without lifting this up. Because um, pretty much once you take this off the board, whatever you have there, it's going to be almost impossible to, to cut into that again without making a mess, without making it look funky. Um, so you want to put as much pressure and make sure you're cutting all the way through before you take your straight edge away. So we have it ready, and I think um, we're going to head and go ahead and go for it. So I want to put as much pressure on this as possible so I know that this isn't going to move when I'm making this cut. This particular tool has a little line, if you can see it. It has a line so that you can line it up with the line that you made on the perpendicular dimension. So you know where it's going to start cutting. So you can put that in there. And 
I actually move it a little bit forward of that line because as you can see when this comes down it's going to cut a little bit into it so to avoid having like a major cut outside of the window kind of move it up a little bit not too much just just a little hair and now I'm gonna press down into that make sure I have that in and unlike the other one where you would pull it to make the cut this one you actually push so I'm gonna start going You know where to finish the cut also because of that line that's on the tool. cuts hopefully they went all the way through and now we can lift this up and it did you have a nice bevel on the inside there looks very professional if I do say so myself we're ready to place the picture inside the map so to get the image directly into the window um, it's going to take a little bit of maybe some trial and error we're going to see how well we can do the first time um, we have our linen hinging tape take that out And I'm actually going to flip the image over to work on the back here. over and make sure that the tape has the sticky side up because now we're going to take our fresh mat here we're going to see if we can lay this right in Now just gently press so that the tape gets in there. And you can flip that over now. Smooth that out on there. Make that extra secure. Might be overkill, but put a little bit more tape. 
Now all that's left is to put it in the frame. So now we can obviously place this first in the frame, make sure there's no debris on the glass. Uh, if there is, have a helper hand you a cloth, get that out of there. this in there, gently, and then place our backing piece, and now we can uh, put new points, because the points for this frame, since it's a repurposed frame, have been removed, so just drive those in there. And there you have it. Thank you for watching as I matted and reframed this picture by Suzanne Camp Crosby. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media at HCCFL underscore art galleries. Take care. Thank you for watching me as a. Uh, thanks for looking at me. Thank you for looking. <laughs> the end is just all these bloopers. Thank you. For, thank me for you watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching me. No, 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 that's not it. <laughs>